No access. Freddy Krueger returning. We'd never have it. I have a pretty wild uh, HHN collection, so this is like a little uh, prize possession right here. Okay guys, we're back at Universal Studios Florida, and it's time for another Halloween Horror Nights 2024 update. The first speculation map has dropped. Will Freddy Krueger be returning for this year? It'll be kind of like uh, coding all the new symbols and kind of the stuff that I was hearing behind the scenes. There's also some brand new merchandise, more Easter eggs hidden within the tribute store. There's so much happening. Uh, but so the HHN shirt of the day, we're gonna go back in time to 2001, the year of Eddie, kind of Jack. Uh, there's a whole crazy backstory to it. But we have the wonderful tie-dye shirt right you got Eddie right there now originally it was supposed to be blood because it was 2001 they switched it to kind of green and slime my favorite part is the back chainsaw kind of going through you it says HHN in the back one of the rarest pieces you have the ICU hat right and then on the back it's gonna say Halloween Horror Night 2001 so on that note let's roll the commercial Jack is back and he's more horrifying than ever do you think he's here tonight oh he's here somewhere Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. Five new haunted houses and new live shows. Florida residents save up to $15 with advanced ticket purchase with a valid Florida ID. <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights 11 at Universal. Okay, so welcome back. Let's go ahead. And Heading back in under the Universal Florida Archway. Again, Mardi Gras is still happening until April 7th. You know the first thing we gotta do. We gotta visit the king of Universal Studios. Cabby over here. Wait, did I hear it's your birthday? Uh, well, it was. It, it was? March 9th was my, was my birthday. Well, happy birthday. Thank you, Kevin. I Aww. appreciate that. Yeah. So the question of the day is, okay, well, yeah, Oscars yeah. just ended. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. What was your movie of the year? My movie of the year. See, did they have any movies about cars? <laughs> Transformers? <laughs> oh, no, Transformers? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, that, that's not bad. Uh, as far as the, the ones that were nominated, I, I have to say I did, I did like the Oppenheimer, you know, because if it wasn't for nuclear uh, fission, we'd never have a tax. Oh, no, we probably would have a tax. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Doc Doc Brown. I think oh, without right, that, yeah, there yeah, wouldn't no. be uh, Doc Brown would like that. He's turning 21 this year. Who would have thought? All right, first stop of day. We got to pop into Five and Dime here because, you know, they, they got the HHN props for sale. See if there's anything new. changes now to the Monster Makeover. They added some Mardi Gras face paint now. I believe these are only $25 because it's just kind of around the eyes. But you have this one right here. This one has kind of like a, almost like a mermaid design to it. But then there's like some butterflies. And this is like, you know, like a classic Mardi Gras mask that you wear. Here's like, you look like a rock star. And then kind of like a Mardi Gras jester. And the last one, kind of like a, almost like a frost queen a little bit. But so they have some new makeup designs just for the Mardi Gras time now. All right, they now have prices on them. So this one would be like 450. We got some new sign. Product's so good, it's flying off the shelf. And we have some more spots from the comic. Now they are advertising when you get out of the Born Stuntacular, the monster maker. Okay, so the first little bit of the speculation map we're gonna talk about is the background behind all the images or the symbol. It's like a wallpaper design. If you look very closely, it almost looks like an Ace of Spades. Now how does the Ace of Spades um, connect with HHN, right? The main card for Lady Luck was the Ace of Spades. I was like, okay, there's gotta be more clues within Universal or the Tribute Store connecting Lady Luck, this wallpaper. So we're gonna head to the Tribute Store. I'm gonna show you what I found. I right, we're hopping in the Tribute Store real quick. I so first room you come in, right, you gotta come over here to the left and there's gonna be all these playing cards right here. Now throughout the entire tribute store, you're gonna see playing cards. Now again, the teams always love to hide little Easter eggs and details for upcoming things happening within Universal Studios. So we're gonna come over here. This is gonna be kind of one of the guest quarters. You're gonna have cards right down there. And then also cards right there. Right here will be where the ghost appears. If you come over here to the check-in desk, come all the way down here and there's some more playing cards. We're now into the main ballroom, right? So down here we have cards. We got some more cards. So it's kind of like, maybe this is stuff where people were testing their luck and it did not go very well for them. Cards down there, more cards right there. If you come over here to this little table, there's also more freaking cards. And then also down here, they will have some more cards. But the interesting thing is a lot of these cards are gonna be spades. Right here, right here, most of those right there, right here. Okay, so now we will be leaving the unfortunate destruction of the uh, river cruise and heading off into the bayou. I don't know if there's any playing cards in here. I know there are some of the next rooms. We will now be heading in to Ta Ta's ship. And if you come over here, you're gonna look right at this map and hidden behind the map for Florida is some cards, right? So 
The connection with the card. Coming to Florida. You know what I'm saying? One of the Baron's eyes have gone out. Just get the man an eye patch at this point. Okay, so why do we think Lady Luck is coming? So we got the speculation map with the background with the spades. We got all the cards throughout all the rooms within the tribute store. During the anniversary a couple years ago, they released this like sticker sheet. But it was like a legendary truth sticker sheet. A big prominent figure on there was the cards with Ace of Spades for Lady Luck. A lot of those little details that have been hidden within that sticker sheet have shown up within houses. It's kind of a template for what's coming. Again, Lady Luck, a big portion of that. Legendary truth. Still thinking maybe uh, we might get a little uh, Boris icon this year. Imagine you got Boris and then each scare zone is a different case. That's how I'm still kind of connected it all together. The thing is, it's easy to figure out kind of the IP houses because there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen to people within like film industry within Hollywood to here. There's a lot more people dealing with the IPs. There's easier leaks that happen. It's the original stuff that's hard to figure out because that really doesn't start leaking until probably like a month or two from now about like original houses and all that stuff. It's great to see you. Great to see you, Lisa. You look wonderful today. The pearls. Marilyn is jealous of them. And then Bart, how are you doing? Oh, some boogies. Oh. <laughs> now again, Mel's has reopened. I have filmed the video about Mel's. The new food is terrible. It'll be coming out soon. So these are like the really big fountains, right? So we have a couple of them. We got the new projectors. Some more construction over there. This is a massive undertaking that Universal is doing. Then on the speculation map, for the nighttime show, there's a castle. I don't know what the nighttime show is at all, Rage Age on this year. Um, I'm gonna guess you got the castle, right? You got Frankenstein's castle. Might have some classic Universal monsters for a projection show for the nighttime, but I know nothing about what's coming for the nighttime show. Okay, and then the other night, they were testing drones. They're just kind of testing them out to see if it works well with the show. Okay, so the house back here with the crescent moon, with the stars. We'll be talking about that later in the video. I'm kind of explaining the backstory behind that. No uh, 3D effect to them, just simple flat sign. Gabby's dollhouse right there. We got another flat sign for DreamWorks. Shrek's house still looks good though. They haven't trimmed this down yet. They'll trim it down to kind of look like the moss on his house. We did get some new signs on the construction walls. Train with Poe. The awesomeness starts this summer. Bring your friends. Swing by this summer. Here we go. The party starts this summer. At least one of us is excited to enter the swamp this summer. Now there's a very interesting rumor. I think it's more of a joke, um, but they're saying the castle might be for Harold and Kumar. I don't think there's any backing behind that, but it did make me chuckle. But they do need to bring back more stage shows. There's not enough offerings. Last year was a mess. Back in the day, they used to have so many different offerings throughout the entire park. Different musicians, different uh, magical acts everywhere. They used to actually have shows here at the uh, Animal Actor Soundstage. We just haven't used it in forever. Okay, and then we're back by the Sprung Tents right now. There's gonna be a unknown original house. We'll talk about that probably in a couple weeks. All right, then the other one has this like bull with like arrows crisscross. I have no idea what the logo stands for. I think there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be changing. This is not 100% accurate from all the stuff that I was hearing. There's some stuff that is right. I will tell you that this is the version one and it's gonna change throughout the season. On that note, let's head off to the next little area. Okay, we're over at Fear Factor stage now. Now the symbol is gonna be kind of fire. It has been confirmed by the Fuel Girls that they are coming back. I'm excited for them to come back. I'm just I'm just kind of sick of the Fuel Girls show. Kind of the same song and dance, I feel like every single year. Bring back the Beetlejuice show, right? Have them at Dante's Inferno, or you bring in the Fuel Girls as like the girls from Dante's Inferno so you can kind of get that fun Bill and Ted humor and kind of the pop culture jokes that Beetlejuice can, uh, you know, Know, give out, but then also have the fun fire dancers. That, that's what I'd love to see, but I feel like we'll probably just get another Fuel Girls version of a show. Alright, let's pop into the Wizarding World now. Looks like Celestina's outperforming right now. Okay, so on the map you see the skull with the snake right in the DE standing for the Death Eaters. As you know, the Death Eaters were here last year in the Wizzy World and they will probably be returning again this year because it was such a success. So I have a question for you. The Oscar season just happened. I know your eyes are sewn shut, but what's your favorite movie? Wow. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you needed to bring up my eyes being sewn shut. Yeah, like, I still have feelings. 
I still have to, you know, like, besides, I don't really get out much. Yeah, that is true. You know, I'm too attached to my work. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I am. For the longest time, they were having like AC run from over here, and then it went like all the way up this building. But it looks like the refurb has been done, and it almost looks like the building has been painted though over there. All right, we're by Fast and the Furious, so it is an unknown IP out here. We don't know where a Blumhouse property is. We talked about in the last video how they've designed the Five Nights at Freddy's house. We don't know where it's popping up. If it's popping up here or Vegas, we'll have to see. But I like that beat builders have their little uh, garland on their cart. Let's do this. No access. Uh, so we got the new projectors up there, right? But this is all under construction. They have security off on the other end. They got the construction walls up here by Starbucks. So you can still get out of Starbucks, but it's all walled off. So they're doing all sorts of work over here. Now even back here, it's all blocked off for construction right there. Okay, so then the two symbols that we have over here, right? There's a, a lollipop, but it almost looks like the same lollipops that were used during um, Sweets Revenge. So maybe Major Sweets is gonna be getting his own house. And the house next to it, you have a little Tribby. It's the icon for the Tribute Store and the Tribute Store comics. A little Tribby, but he's got a black and white face. That might be maybe where they uh, continue the Boris storyline. The Boris room was in black and white, and the face is split between black and white. And then, you know, we're outside the Ghostbusters firehouse. So the other symbol right, you have the Cadillac symbol. It's the same symbol that's on the Cadillac, right, from the Ecto-1. We've been talking about this for like months now. It'll be the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire based off the new film, not the older films, The House. Right down there where Stranger Things was last year. And right over here, we got the peacock looking into the telescope. What is he looking at? What does he see up there? In Optimus Prime? Now over here, next two symbols that we can see for the Halloween Horror Nights speculation map. We have this one with fangs. It could potentially be a vampire house, but we'll be talking about this a little uh, deeper in an upcoming video. And then the other one will be this image. We don't really know too much about what this could mean. Before we talk about the other houses that are on the list, we're going to head off to Islands of Adventure to Circus McGurkis. Okay, so while we're heading over there, let's talk about the scare zone. Will we get a returning scare zone here? Probably not. It'll probably be back in the front of the park again. We'll talk about it in an upcoming video about the reasonings about what happened last year. Like there was stuff designed for this street. There's supposed to be a street here. Everything kind of pushed to the front. I don't see a scare zone happening on this street again this year. You have a lot of dead space and then we'll have the street kind of in the front like that. So now over here they have a little sign up for the Universal Studios credit card. Now over here in the main gift shop they have another little stand where they're offering the credit card sign up. Okay so when it comes to the new credit card the main reason I wanted to sign up for it they're gonna have a special lounge only for the card members. Now I thought it was both cards so like the non-annual fee and the annual fee it's for the one only with the annual fee that you can get into the club. They're gonna apparently have it at City Walk. The club's gonna be here. If you're at Universal Studios Hollywood, it's right above the Starbucks next to Mummy. The Visa Universal Studios card lounges. They have special snacks and drinks and stuff in there. All right, since Mel's isn't very good, we are back here for lunch. Circus McGurkis. Okay, so it's gonna be the pizza pasta. Baked mac and cheese, cavatappi, pepperoni with marinara sauce. Uh, it looks nice and simple. There's some oregano on top, decent cheese pull. The marinara is like, and the cheese is just like straight pizza fries. And instead of fries, you're having pasta. So it tastes just pretty much like pizza fries with pasta. Okay, pizza pasta. I did not finish. I'm stuffed. Portion sizes here are huge. It's good the first half of it. Do I really want to eat like two pounds of pizza pasta? No. But the first pound is decent, right? I'm gonna do a seven out of 10. It's like simple junk food, but it's still pizza fries where it's like a masterpiece. Kids are really enjoy it. If you're a very picky eater, it's a very simple pasta dish for you. So 7 out of 10. One of the houses that we forgot to talk about over when we were at Universal Studios, over by where Dr. Oddfell's 
Twisted Origins was by Fear Factor stage. It's a symbol of like, you can't hear. It's like zero audio. A lot of people are thinking The Quiet Place. I have heard some rumors of that, but it also just doesn't make sense. You really can't create a true immersive environment with it being quiet, because it's a conga line going through the entire house. So how are they supposed to make it quiet? Because that's the impactful scares, unless it's just, they're using the title, it's just the monsters jumping out at you, you know, every 10 seconds. I don't know how they will transition a quiet place into a house, but that's the leading rumor for that symbol right now. We're gonna explore a little bit more, and then we'll head back to the office and talk about the final little symbol, which will relate to Freddy Krueger and all that stuff. We just finished, uh, look, look at this topiary. It's, 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 it's E.T. T is a legit topiary here at Universal. Uh, if you're playing the basketball game here, you can earn a burnt up little Stay Puft. I have all the characters from Jaws. So these are all prizes that you can earn at the uh, basketball game. It's currently a 35 minute wait for Kong. Now, Skull Island, Reign of Kong. You speak kind of an okay attraction. Many budget cuts over the years. No characters anymore. Three glasses have now been taken away. And you don't even go outside. Now, why would you ride this attraction? Uh, escape the rain. There's kind of AC. All right, we're coming up on the world's largest turd now. This is where all the 3D glasses used to be. All signage has been removed. They are just random holes in the wall. Looks like you put a giant cassette in there or something. So on that note, let's go ride the attraction. Discovered many hidden passages through the Great Wall. This one will take us to the rendezvous point with teams. Help putting up the traps. Hold on, I need more light. Oh, great. I hate these flying rats. More Dexes, take cover! It's very nauseating because it's not in focus, even though it's 2D, it's still kind of 3D. Now, fun fact is when they were designing Spider-Man, they created this new technology. Uh, we'll play a little clip. One of the problems that we had to fix was how do we move a ride vehicle across a screen that's projecting 3D and have it look natural? 
the whole idea of 3D has, been, has always been very restrictive. You're always told, oh, you got to sit in the middle seat, you know, halfway back because that's the only spot where the 3D really works. And that's true. There is a sweet spot. So what we had to do was we had to find a way to make 3D work from a moving point of view. To solve the problem of the distortion that you see as you move past the screen, we developed a process that we call squinching. And squinching basically is predicting what that distortion is going to be and counteracting it with additional distortion in the opposite direction. With my anti-gravity cannon, even Spider-Man won't be able to stop me. You mean stop me? So if you look at one of these images, just standing there watching it, it's going to look all tweaked, and it's going to move, and it's going to stretch, and it's going to squash, and do a whole bunch of things that look really weird. Even Spider-Man won't be able to stop When you watch it from the car, but it's moving in the right path at the right timing, that thing just looks like a window onto a virtual world. You know, it's made for when you're, like, moving. You're in a moving vehicle to blend with the 3D so that it looks right and your brain can pick up on that. By taking the 3D away, really messes with you. Uh, I feel nauseous after riding that attraction. I will never ride it again without 3D. That's sad, you know, right? They're just pinching pennies at this point. They don't want to pay for team members to clean the glasses and the maintenance fees and all that stuff. The ride is meant to be 3D. You take away the 3D, it's not how it was properly designed. Don't go ride this attraction. Skip it during your vacation. Now we're gonna pop into Jurassic Outfitters now, see if there's any new merch. Most of this Mr. DNA stuff is old from uh, like last year. Man, this is a classic with the lounge fly. Bingo, dino DNA. You're looking at $82. And for an unnamed price is gonna be this new tank top. $17, they have these really cute new little figures. They're called Bike Club. They're like little mini versions. So you have a T-Rex, right? You know, when the lawyer's in the bathroom about to be eaten. Then you have Blue over here with Owen training. Then there's the Triceratops. His little companion is the poop. Never notice at the register. Little Amber right here with the mosquito. We did buy him. He's too good. They're all labeled Jurassic World. Na, 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 na. And everybody's favorite blood-sucking lawyer. And then we have the cutest version of the T-Rex, I think, ever. Little chompers. God, he's so chucky. Look at his little arms. That's so good. This is how the Triceratops one is going to look. And then there's the poop next to the Triceratops. The best part is he's like kicking his foot after he's pooped. And then here's little blue about to eat. I have coaster. A 130 minute wait. Welcome to spring break. Every time I see this light in Jurassic Park, I always think of what the Cromwell little wand when they're casting the spell in Halloween Town. This is exactly how it looked. Before we go talk about the HHN stuff, they have an advertisement for Megamind. This is one of the worst films of the year. It's a 90 minute PS2 cutscene. One of the most unfunny pieces of garbage you'll ever watch. Now, uh, Will Ferrell, he was like, I had scheduling conflicts. That's why I couldn't voice him. It's bad. It's real bad. They did this wonderful character and film franchise is so dirty. We're heading to CityWalk now. Let's see if there's any new merchandise. Then we'll head back to the office to talk about the rest of the Halloween Horror Nights rumors and everything. Okay, let's pop into the Universal Studios store here at CityWalk. Now, I have not seen these store displays yet. The King Gator right there. You have the masks and then the beads hanging everywhere. Okay, so we have a whole new Harry Potter collection. I love all the acceptance letters that go along the archway. $49, they have an umbrella. So we have the Black Family Tapestry, right? Like the family tree. $45, we get a better look at the tapestry. There's gonna be a pillow cover. $57. $7. Again, we have the Black Family Tapestry, a little family tree, but as a bag. $45. We also have the map, the Marauders map, right? But as a pillowcase. When you put the covers on the pillows, it'll look like that. $20 for these magnets. So we have like book covers, right, for some of the uh, spell books. And over here, we're going to have the Daily Prophet about Dumbledore, about Snape. $45 for the Black Family Tapestry, little uh, pot. $29 for the trinket tray. $18 for the Marauders map tea towel. And also for $18, they have the Hogwarts ticket for another tea towel. What is a tea towel? $49 for this little sketch of Hogwarts. Then they have a bunch of cards. These are all going to be $6 a piece. This could be the Whomping Willow. They have a card for the Marauders map. They have a little card for the water plant. And then another card of Harry Potter getting his acceptance letter. I like this because it moves a little bit. They have the wanted poster for Harry Potter. And then we have one for Sirius Black. Dumbledore. Daft or dangerous. The boy who lived, who headmaster of Hogwarts, Severus Snape, confirmed. So I have a card for each one of the houses. I think I won for Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, or Hufflepuff. So I have all these journals, which are kind of made to look like the spell books. Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. These are all $25. Hogwarts, a history. Then along the spine, there's like some stars. A history of magic. The tales of Beetle the Bard. We also have a bunch of new Hagrid's merchandise. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, $33 
for this green t-shirt. Then on the back, you're gonna have this wonderful design. It's gonna have the title of the attraction and then kind of all the different creatures that you run into on the ride. $45 for this little crossbody bag. So the front, you get a little pocket. Oh, you got the spider on there, oh no. And on the back, so you can store a water bottle in the back. $35 for this bucket hat, but it's reversible. And then on the inside, it's got all the creatures. The one thing I just hate is the spiders. Just seeing that on a hat really creeps me out. If they took off the spiders, this would sell a lot better. $25, they have a water bottle. So it's the same design that was on the shirt. Almost got like this wood finish to it. On the back, it says Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. And then for $25, they have a little kid shirt. Okay, guys, we're back in the office now. Let's talk about the rumors about uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy Krueger returning to Halloween Horror Nights this year. So, uh... There's this mysterious symbol, right, with the crescent moon with some stars. Now, we've seen this symbol before in 2007. Now, that symbol first showed up in the Nightmare on Elm Street Dreamwalker's house. There's a little pre-show, right? So if you, like, stood there in line, HHN houses used to have pre-shows. <laughs> So if you're a little confused about uh, Hypnosil, it's like a fictional medicine from the Nightmare on Elm Street cinematic like universe. And now I actually own the one of one inhaler that was made and created for that pre-show. Let me show you to you guys real quick. Like they only made one of these. I have a pretty wild uh, HHN collection. So this is like a little uh, prize possession right here. Cause this was used in the pre-show. This is the actual one that like thousands of thousands of people looked at every single night in the pre-show. Uh, but so as you can see, right, there's the logo right there. The crescent moon with the stars. So there are a lot of rumors, right, about Freddy returning this year. I've heard some of them. Uh, it's looking like there's a very high potential that, you know, Freddy Krueger could be returning this year. I didn't give too much information for this video because I want to, I want to like piece it out, right? I don't want to reveal too much. So there's a lot of those like empty spaces on the speculation map. The speculation map is, I will tell you, it's, it's kind of right. There's stuff that's right. Also stuff that's wrong. I will kind of uh, like help you in the right direction in the upcoming videos. But the first HHN announcement should be happening pretty soon. I'm going to guess probably next week, right? When the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire movie releases and they'll be like, Hey, go see the film and then come see our house coming to HHN this year. So that's what I'm going to be guessing is going to be the first bit of information we will be getting. I'm going to guess probably the end of the month we will get our first little tease. So guys, on that note, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button. Join the family. We, we love, love the family. family! Because I'm going to be keeping you up to date on all things Halloween Horror Nights and Universal Studios around the country. I love you all, and I'll see y'all very soon. Wasn't for nuclear uh, fission. They have this Spider-Man side and swing on over to Island's Adventure. It's kind of like ripped and on like Spider-Man's crotch you have like this little Hooterade? Just hang it off right there.